We're going to be seeing a basic state board layered haircut this morning. All right, the first thing I want to show you is how to drape using a neck strip. Sometimes it's nice to do that with a haircut so we don't have the bulk of a towel. And neck strips are stretchable so that they will fit any neck size. And they have a little sticky here. You notice one side is a darker blue than the other. The dark blue side will stick together when we put it around the neck. So we're going to stretch this out a little bit. We're going to bring it around the neck and fasten it together. And I always use a child size cape on the mannequins because their necks are really small and the child size capes fits them better. And I like to put it on backwards. You know, we usually fasten it in the back, but I like to have the smooth surface in the back where I let the hair down. And I'm just going to fasten her up. And then I'm going to fold the neck strip down over the cape. And the purpose of the neck strip is just like the purpose of the towel whenever we're doing a haircut, is to keep the plastic of the uh, cape from touching her skin because some people have a reaction to it when it touches their skin. I'm going to section for our basic haircut. And I like to use the five section parting. I'm going to start out by parting down the center. And I use her nose as a guideline. And you can always check your guideline by putting your comb on the tip of her nose and straight up and see if you've got it in the center. And it is necessary that we keep our parts relatively straight during a haircut. If not, we get to cutting on one side or the other unevenly. I also want to show you how to work your chair. So that we can get her up and down as we need to. And um, clients sometimes like to work the chair for you, and there's a way you can stop that from happening. So let's discuss our chair. I need to get her up a little bit so I don't bend, because we shouldn't be uncomfortable during our hair cutting service. To pump it up, just pump it easily. Don't push it down to the bottom. Just pump it easily. You'll see it come up. And if she's the client that likes to work the chair herself by hitting the counters or something, all you've got to do is put your foot under that and she can no longer move your chair around. And when you get ready for it to move again, just put it down. I'm starting off with the four section parting, but then I'm going to section out my top section when I get the first four, and the top will be considered section number five. I'm just coming down right behind the ear and I don't want to get down into the curve too much, but I want this over here to match the sideburn. Some clients will not have that sideburn. Some of them do. Another thing I want to tell you as we section off, don't stand here and stretch this wet hair and do like this. And I know that looks neater, but we're putting a lot of stress on the hair. So I like to just flip mine around a little bit. And sometimes if we're taking a lot of time, the hair begins to dry out, and it's very stressful on the hair if you've stretched it as you sectioned it off. And you notice I haven't clipped my clips on my pockets because that's unsanitary. And when I let these two up or put them up, I'm going to leave out somewhere close to three-fourths of an inch or inch guideline and that'll be where I first cut and we're going to use a traveling guideline and I'll show you what traveling guideline means in a minute as we go along with it it's particularly important when you go to state board that you use the five section parting so if you do not have time to complete your haircut during the allotted 20 five minutes, then they know you have not cut what's left sectioned off. And usually that's going to be the top area since that's the last area you do. Now I want to go back, section out my top area, 
I just want to make sure I've got a clean parting. And I notice where I've um, sectioned it kind of on the eyebrow so I can use that as a determining factor of where to put it on the other side. So my top is an even section. Sectioning is vitally important to hair cutting. A lot of people do not like to do it now. They like to just start cutting and cut a little bit here and cut a little bit there. And then they're constantly going back and checking. If you will section from the start, you know right where you are and that you've cut it by your guide. And if you notice when I took these clips out, I did not lay them on the counter. Once you lay your clip or comb down, it's got to be washed and disinfected before you use it again. And if you notice this comb has stayed in my hand, which I think y'all have all learned to become one with your equipment. The first thing I'm going to do is get my initial guideline. And when I said traveling guideline, that means that I'm not going to bring all the hair down to this point to cut after I cut this. That means that I'm going to use this only for the next section I let down. Then that section will become my guide and it will travel with me through my haircut. I want you to make sure you hold your implements correctly. That means your fourth finger, you rest your little finger on the finger rest, and the thumb goes in here. Now, when I start to section again, it's easy to have these shears open and we're going to hold them because we don't lay them down either. So we're going to learn to palm our shears, and you palm your shears simply by taking your thumb out and placing it there so they're closed, rolling it into your palm, and then when you let more hair down, you haven't got to worry about these open scissors going through there, because even if you don't close them, they're sharp enough that it'll just take the hair right off. Of course, you're probably going to have to do that a time or two before you decide how, it, how important palming is. I want to show you something about the all-purpose comb. I like to cut with the tail comb because it sections easily. But if we're trying to cut this hair to a distinctive number, five, six, seven inches, our comb is seven inches long and it has the measurements on it. So at any point in time, we can put it right here on our hair and see how long we are. Okay? So you've always got your measuring tool. For state board purposes, and I know you've been to the salon, but for state board purposes, we should catch all of the hair in our fingers. We want to make sure we don't do angles like this or angles like that. Angling our fingers or our shears causes our cut to be uneven. I'm not interested in cutting big hunks at a time. At state board, you must lay your cut hair on a paper towel. I'm not going to make you start with that. I know that, that you'll learn better where you can see what you're cutting rather than get letting a guideline fall. And you see what I'm talking about? If I cut right here, you can see what I'm doing. But if I do this, my guide comes out of my fingers and cuts, and students find that very difficult to do. So I'm going to let you let it fall on the floor to start with, but if you let it fall on the floor at state board, you're going to fail that portion of your state board exam. And again, you can see, and another major rule is you never cut above the second knuckle. First off, right up in here, you can do a lot of damage with these scissors cutting into your hands. But next off, you'll notice when you hold something, you hold it with a different tension from here out. You're stronger from here out than you are here. It wants to slip and slide. And if we put different amounts of ten tension on this hair as we're cutting, we're going to cut different lengths because remember the rule about how much elasticity the hair has? What is it about wet hair? It stretches. How much? 50%. 50 percent. Whereas dry hair will only stretch 20 percent. So we want to make sure we're putting the same amount of tension as we go along so occasionally we're going to be wetting our hair over. But again we're cutting. We always start in the center and go to one side and start in the center and go to one side. And it really doesn't matter which side you go to first as long as you're consistent. Right hand people will have a tendency to want to go to the left. Left hand people will have a tendency to want to go to the right first. 
And it really doesn't matter as long as you're always starting in the center. And you notice I'm not interested in cutting big gobs of hair um, every time because I want it to be consistent cutting. Notice also you don't hear my scissors clacking. Whenever you hear scissors making a noise, you're either doing something wrong or your scissors need oiling or repairing. All right, now I've got my first cut. I'm going to palm my shears. I've got my guide. I'm going to let down another section that is about one half to one inch wide. And I don't want to get too wide because when I do, it causes me to cut above my second knuckle and then I get in trouble. I'm going to do a little elevation. The object of this haircut is whatever length I cut that guideline to, every hair on this head should be that same length when I get through. If it's five and a half inches, then every hair on that head should be five and a half inches. And we're going to use the elevation right up here. The object is the very top one. The object is when we get to the occipital bone. Y'all remember where the occipital bone's at? When we get to it, we should be holding the hair straight out. When we get to the crown, we should be holding it straight up. And you can see as it moves around in that circle. So we're just going to put a little bit of elevation let my guide fall and I cut being careful not to cut my guide because remember it's already been cut I want to be aware of what I'm doing so hair cutting is a thought process if you notice I'm getting some of my guide from down under and I'm getting some of my guide that I just cut so I'm making it blend all the time. And the purpose of cutting vertically, if you notice every section I pick up is vertical. It's not horizontal like this. And the reason I don't pick up horizontally is because I don't want a distinctive line in there. And if you cut horizontally, you're going to have a horizontal line. I come back to my center and start to the right side. And let me tell you, even on a live client, if you've been cutting off two and a half inches and all of a sudden it looks like you only have an inch to cut off, does that mean you've done something wrong? No, it doesn't. That's what we always think, but these mannequins are not consistent with their lengths. And humans ha always have one side of the head that grows faster than the other. Now, I always get the question, so I want to answer it before it gets here. Do I cut on the top of my fingers or under my fingers? I want you to watch now as I'm putting elevation at the different angle my fingers go at. Do you see anything different? Sure do. Do I look comfortable? Do I look relatively comfortable? Yeah. And that's why I've done that. I've got to stay comfortable because I'm going to do this from 8 to 10 hours today. And I want to make sure that I don't get bent out of shape. And you notice that I'm moving every time I cut an area so that I am totally parallel with the, the section that I'm cutting. You may also use your chair to bring it to you rather than you going to it. Now, we use that bottom as our guideline. As we let down the next section, we're going to use this as our guideline. And you see you don't see any distinctive layers, but you can tell this is a little bit layered up in, in comparison to the bottom. All right, so I've palmed my shears again. I'm going to let down another section between one half inch and one inch wide. Am I at the occipital bone now? So this section I should hold straight up or almost straight up, right? Straight out, I mean, excuse me. Thank you. We're going right back to the center again. And I'm going to hold it almost straight out because I should be about even with the occipital bone. Hold it straight out. 
and I'm going to cut, making sure I cut straight up. You see how loose that hair is getting above my second knuckle? You see how I'm using not the bottom layer, but the layer that I've just cut as my guide. And again, I want to stand right even with what I'm cutting. So this time I'm going to turn my chair around. In other words, I should be wherever I'm cutting. I want it right in front of me. If I start leaning over here, then notice what happens. I'm pulling it a further distance, and it's going to cause me to leave it longer than the rest. All right, we've come back to the center, and now we're going to the right side. It's all right. If you'll notice, I try to check all the time I'm cutting to see if I've got any distinctive lines and to see if I can tell it doesn't have any weightiness there. When we pull all the hair down to this length and cut it, we begin to get a weight line right here. And when we're cutting a layered haircut, we don't want a weight line anywhere because the basic layered haircut is not meant to have a weight line. And we will do a blunt haircut one day so you can see exactly what a weight line is. Or you might look around the room and see a weight line in somebody's hair. Now I palm my shears, let down the next section. The next section I'm going to hold straight out with just a little up, upward movement. I've got to let my chair down so I can manage it a little better. And you notice I'm leaving my chair so I can turn it back and forth. Start in the center again. Hold it straight out, but with just a little upward movement. So again, my guideline is traveling with me. If we were using a stationary guideline, we'd have to comb all the hair down to that first hair that we cut underneath here. How many of y'all are ready to cut? Good. That is the only way you will ever learn to cut, is to cut. You can watch me and learn some of the basics, but you've got to see how the hair actually feels and falls and works for you. And the one thing you need to learn in doing hair, whether it's a haircut or a style, is you work the hair, don't let the hair work you. We're going back to the center now to go to the right side. Notice again, I'm going to change. You see my hand direction change? I want to get comfortable. I don't want my arms hanging up there or becoming real um, tiresome for me. And notice again, I'm trying to be careful not to go above my second knuckle because all I need to do today is to cut into my hand. Have y'all noticed in this area of the head that I've consistent, consistently had less to cut off? I guess when they made this mannequin, they didn't get the hair um, even in that area. 
and it doesn't matter where or when you change direction of your hands as long as you use the same elevation. And while I'm cutting this, I want to talk to you a little bit about elevation, but I want you to stop me if you have a question and you don't understand what we're doing. All right, we're fixing to let down our next section, and I want to remind you again of our chart up there and watch elevation because I'm going to explain to you now what makes the difference in the independent hair cutter and the hair cutter that always has to depend on somebody else. If you understand the basics of elevation, you can cut any haircut you want to cut simply by looking at a picture. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? But it's understanding the basics of elevation. The higher I hold this hair in relation to the guideline, the more hair I'm going to cut off. The lower I hold it in relation to my next guideline, the less hair I'm going to cut, cut off. So lower is less, higher is more. So if they come in and they've got this haircut that is all different levels through there, all you've got to do is get your guideline and then decide, do I need to hold it a little bit high like I've been doing through this basic haircut? Do I need to pull it all down to one area? If there's a weight line, you're going to pull it down to that area. If it's cut in a lot, you're going to over-elevate. That's just how simple it is to do the different haircuts. To blend, as we go later on, you'll um, be learned, you'll be taught to use the um, blenders. You'll also be taught point cutting or notch cutting and that helps blend in when you get lines as you use elevation that you may not want. You don't want the lines but you want the elevation. All right, how are we going to hold this now? We're getting up close to our crown area. Can we look at the picture and just... Almost, but not quite because we've got a couple more levels going. We we're certainly going to go a little higher than we did a while ago. So we're going to hold it up, cut. And again, watch the angle of your shears because I want you to see how I can change how much I cut simply by not being conscious of the angle of my shears. Now let's say I took and cut like that. I'd, I'd cut off too much, wouldn't I? You see how my layers are coming up? You don't see any lines, but you see that I'm coming up with the layers. And this is what they call the basic layered haircut. Matter of fact, a lot of us call this the state board haircut because this is exactly what you've got to do at state board. You've got to do the whole head, hopefully. But now you can move along a lot faster than I'm moving along because I'm stopping and talking and all of that. So, Mr. Russell, when we're picking up, our, picking up to get our next cut, we just need to pick up a little bit of our guide just enough. To yeah, just enough to show you because if you begin to pick up too far down, then you start measuring by it, and that, that's what gets you in trouble. Are right, we going to go back to the center so we can head to the right? Okay. And don't automatically assume when you don't have any to cut or you've got less to cut that you've done something wrong. Check and make sure that you haven't done anything wrong. Usually it's not going to be you. It's going to be the hair on the head and the way it grows. Let's talk about calyx a little bit too while we're doing this. When we let down our next section, we get into an area of the head that a lot of people have calyx. And if we're cutting hair this length, it really doesn't matter about the calyx too much unless she wants this real smooth effect where it would kick it up and make it look uneven. But if we've got somebody with short hair that has calyx and we're cutting the basic layered or any other haircut, we want to leave a little bit more length on the, um, in the calyx area so that when it kicks up, it doesn't make it look like it's out of line with our haircut. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to stand, stand up somewhat with the cowlick, so we want to make sure we haven't got an area here that looks like we cut it too short from that cowlick kicking it up, so we leave it just a little bit with a little bit more length. We're going to let down some more, and we're getting up into the crown area now where we're going straight up with it. For some of us short people, getting up in the top area becomes a trial because we can hardly get her low enough. 
So we do have to do a little stretching during that. That's why we didn't really want to bend ourselves out of shape before now. Hold it up. And again, be careful where you cut. And again, I always just like to take a look and see what I got going on there, if it looks like it's coming up a little bit, to make sure I'm doing right. up again and if you notice when you really get to cut and you can move along there cutting um, you know but speed with this is just like speed with your perms or your rollers or anything else the more you do it the faster you get We've gone back to the center now, so we can go to the right side. And notice not only do I get the guide at the bottom, I'm getting what I just cut. And that gives me a two-way measurement to see that I'm doing right correctly. And if you'll notice, I comb it up. I don't just comb it out and then pull it up. If you comb it down first and then hold it up, you're not going to get an accurate measurement. In other words, if I done this and then pulled up, you can see what's going on in here. So I like it combed out smoothly. And then I cut. All right, now we're going to do the entire crown. So we want to make sure we've got all the top out of it, so I'll leave one of the clips in. But I know I'm not going to use this clip again, so I'll go ahead and put it up here because it's going to need to be cleaned and disinfected. Start right in the center. Hold this up and then cut. I like doing hair so you'll notice me feeling the hair a lot as I go through. Does that help me in any way, feel of it? Does it tell me a lot about the hair? What can I tell about the hair by feeling of it? The texture? How about the porosity? If I was putting much tension on it, I could also tell about the elasticity, couldn't I? Going to come back to the center of the crown and go to the right side. Do y'all see how elevation works? Let me show you a trick with elevation. Watch if I'd hold it down here how long this hair is going to be from here to here. That's way longer than what we're wanting to cut it, isn't it? Watch how much now comes off when I put it to the appropriate level of elevation. It's a lot of difference, isn't it? <clears throat> Usually we don't leave it too long, so I'm told. What do we do? Too short. Let's say we all like to cut hair. You see my layers? Do you see any lines? Not yet. The sides is where it really gets interesting. As you can see, I've turned around to the left side. I'm right-handed, but again, it doesn't matter which side you go to. And I've been a little while working on her, and I want her hair consistently wet. So she's dried out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get the water bottle and spritz her. And if you've noticed with it wet, the ends stick together good so you can tell exactly where you're cutting. With dry hair, it just flies everywhere. So I don't like to cut dry hair, although we have to occasionally. We'll have some clients that do not want it wet. I'm going to get me a guide. Now, the beginning 
hair cutter usually thinks that you take this and measure it down here at this bottom length and cut with that guide. But is that hair a lot longer now than what I've got? Mm -hmm. Yes. Think about where we were cutting when we got to this area of the head. I'm going to come right back there and get some of that hair to get my guide. Do you understand why? Do you understand why I'm getting it from there? Because it's the same level on the head. But that is the most confusing thing with beginning cutters. So I pull this out and I know right where to get my guide to match it. I don't have to cut it all at one time. If I hold it out, I'm going to show you a trick because so many people cut out. So let's just go ahead and cut it while we've got it out. And I come by and grade a state board haircut. How did you find that? I said, because I knew what to look for. And I'm going to show you what I found. Now watch when I pull it down. It's longer right here and right here. Why? Because I held it out, and we've got these areas that's lower. So now I've got to come back and trim that off. And also, we've got to put some elevation on this to make it blend. So I'm going to take a little bit of this right here, and I'm going to come right back here again and get a little bit of that in that same area. And I'm going to elevate it. And I'm going to just nip the top. You can see about where it needs to be cut. And I'm going to come further to the front, get a little bit of that again. And that's because this was being held straight up. I'm going to come to the front. Now something with ladies, and this is just a personal thing that I like to do, I like to have a little curve here instead of a straight line. You know, we curvy. So you, can, you may do that if you want to, and you can do that by pulling it a little bit slanted. You notice I'm not pulling it straight like I've been doing. And now it'll give it just a little curve to the front of it. Palm my shears, let down my next layer. And again, I like this as my insurance policy. I'm going to get a little bit of this hair here, and I'm going to stick my comb right back there and get a little bit. And I'm holding it a little more than straight up now, right? Yep. And now if you look at the bottom picture, you can see on the um, sides how it's supposed to be. You just don't pay any attention to the three inches. That was a three-inch cut. But you see that's how you're supposed to start elevating it, just like showing there. And it goes up into the same circle that the back did. down my next layer and I again I'm going to get a little bit right there and make sure I get some of the bottom of it and I'm going to cut my comb in right there and get a little bit of this it was in the same area back there that gives me actually two points to guide as guides I'm through with this clip. I want to go right into that area again and cut me out a little bit. And now this should be straight up without a doubt, right?
Mm hmm. You want to go around and make sure it blends. Because the next area we're going to go in is our top. Now I'm going to ask y'all this question and be honest with me whichever way you want to go. For time's sake, so that y'all can begin to cut some, do you mind if I just go into the top area and we do it? And, and, just, side. and not worry about What's the other side, right? That side, right? It's going to be just okay, like this. Is that all right with everybody? Okay. All right. We're going to learn a couple of things about lines as we go into the top, too. And that's one reason I want to make sure we, we go into this without beleaguering it too long. I want you to notice her hairline in the front. It's going to make it very difficult to hold it horizontally like I've been doing. You see what I'm talking about? Because there's nothing underneath this. So I want you to keep in mind we're going to do something a little bit different when we get to that. And we're going to begin to get into it here and I'll show you what that difference is. We're going to pick that up and we're going to go right back here and get a little bit of it. We're going to come in and we're going to cut, holding it straight up. All right, now when I get here, you see I'm curved in. So what I'm going to do is cut horizontally for this area only. Just for this where we've got the little swoop because there's nothing there for us to guide by. And you notice I'm picking up some from back here that I'd already cut and some from down here to use as my guide. And if you will notice in the picture, we bring this to the front just a little to cut it. And that's so we don't get it too long or too short. All right, we're starting back here. And I want to cut right back here and get a little bit of this to help me along. Make sure I'm getting the right lengths. And I always want to make sure I've got it combed out smoothly. We want to make sure it's straight up. We're going to follow towards the front now. All right, now we get to this area where we've got the turn. And instead of holding it vertically like I've been doing, let's go ahead and cut this. I'm going to hold it horizontally because I have nothing under here to determine it by. So I parted this off horizontally. You notice I'm holding it with the horizon. I've got a little bit of hair from back here and a little bit of the guide from back here. And I want to slant it towards the front just a little. And the reason being is this out here, it's not back there to make sure we cut off enough. And this time I'm going to cut from the front into my guide rather than cutting from my guide into the area to be cut. And that appears to be a little bit like going in with our curve, doesn't it? Does it appear to be the same length? Can you all look and tell you? All right. We go right on with our front area, or our top area. I like to cut half of my top with one side and the other half with the other side and then hold it up in the center and make sure I've got both of them correct. Okay, so I'm going to come right back here. I'll pick this up a little bit from the behind part of the crown area. I'm going to comb it up. I'm going to cut. I'm going right up, straight on back up, vertical again, until I get to that curved place in the head. Now I'm going to take me a horizontal parting.
You see how it appears a little bit longer? That's one reason I'm pulling it over. Let's try to get that length out of it and make it the same length. So let's hold it up again and see if we're... Look all right? All right. Do y'all have questions? Somebody told me a while ago they had a question. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions? Remember what elevation is. It's how high or how low you hold the hair in relation to the guideline. The lower you hold it in relation to the guideline, the longer you're going to leave the hair. The higher you hold it in relation to the guideline, the more hair you're going to cut off and the shorter that next area is going to be. Hair cutting is a thought process. We cannot be talking to the person next to us like we did when we were rolling a perm because if we don't think our way through the haircut, we're going to use the wrong elevation. So I always think. Um, when we start into our lecture now, we're going to take some pictures and look at them and discuss how we put our elevation to cut that. And we're going to take some hair that's long in the back and really short up here, and we're going to take some that's short up here and really long here and discuss how we do the elevation to make the hair do that when we get through. Okay, y'all ready to cut? Good.